hope you enjoy the show. So I ask that you uh, forgive the sounds of the helicopter cruising around overhead. It's either search and rescue or fisheries, one of the two. So, I don't know, they've been up there for a few minutes now and don't seem to be leaving, so. Probably looking for somebody that's missing.
apologies again about the helicopter. Thanks to be with us for the day today. So even if you don't have enough rope to finish your pattern, you've got another hank of rope with a loop on the end. Simply just feed one loop through the other. And take the next hank and go. Clean it up a bit so everything's as tight as can be. One loop hook to another, and off I go. Really all I'm doing here is trying to give additional structural support. And that way when the body weight sits in there, it has lots of support points. So I did kind of a zigzag weave in the beginning, and this is more like a box weave now. I'm wanting to make kind of where the zigzags sit, I want to box rope around it in a square and do that for each one. Now just to get it out of the way, I'm going to take it out to the last point and just tie it off. Uh, here, just using a little half hitch. And I'm just going to reinforce that with a stick. Uh, reinforced wood just falls apart in your hand I'll find a stick and just tie it off and finish it and then I'll lay down in it and you can see so you can see it becomes like boxes with crosses <laughs> crossed upon them so the tree I'm near here is a smaller diameter. This will be the foot end of the bed and the other tree has a larger diameter. It's wider than my shoulders. So that'll be the head end and I don't know if the camera is picking it up but this end is normally about three or four inches maybe higher than the footer end. Just uh, give it a little added comfort.
So these are Prusik loops. I've got toggles tied off to them. And then with additional Prusik loops, it allows me to apply tension and adjust the line. And then I have ones for the tarp. I've got one there. And one here. And then the same configuration on this side. Get the Prusik loop feeding off to the toggle, which then just hooks into another Prusik loop, which I can apply tension. It allows me to put up and take down my ridge line without tying any knots.
Yeah. So there's a nest up there. I don't know if the camera's picking up all right. Must be at least two foot, two and a half foot across, fair size. Probably an eagle nest, I'd imagine. Lost them up in this area. Oh, they're past season, but that would have been a nice little edible treat. All down the tree. Maybe I'll catch them a different part of the year if I come back in the right time. So in just the same fashion as I hang my bags, just put the tail end through the loop. And I've got one facing one side. I put a second one on, facing the other. And I did the same on the other tree. And the one on the one side. And the one on the other. Just did for all four points. So I'm just gonna have to switch things up. The diameter of these trees is a little bit too big for what I'm trying to achieve. I have got to switch down to a smaller diameter tree. I'll cut back. Okay, so I found two smaller diameter trees. I'll bring everything right back to the point I was at before I had to switch trees. Okay, so as you can see, I use the Marlin spike hitches to just lash the uh, poles to the tree, tree stumps if you will, and definitely smaller diameter. And this should fit the purpose of what I'm looking for it to be. And then I'm going to take a couple of my trusty loops, put one on one end, and one on the other. That way, when you sit down, you can only open so far before the loops catch and hold it. You don't want to fall through, if you will. Now, there's a little fine tuning you might find if you build one of these. 
that these loops could be a little large and the trees could space a significant amount. I just wrapped an extra loop of the loop around the smaller diameter end. It just makes it that they can't open quite as far. I did the same down on the other end. So what is this all for, you might ask? The train. So I uh, won't carry on with much more of this part of the video, but uh, I plan on just kind of digging a hole here and uh, using this as a bench to kind of get into the under bits, if you will. It allows you to kind of reach in, if you will without having to get right down and squat and you can relax and think about life and your ex-wife and all these other things, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll cut it here and uh, I'll pick back up up at the main camp. So I'm just going to stop and do a little coffee break at this point in time, I think. So this is a fancy feast alcohol stove. Um, if you don't know how to make these, I've got a previous video that I posted. It's a detailed description on how these are made. But in essence, made out of like a tomato paste can and uh, fancy feast cat food, with a little bit of uh, carbon felt in in between the two with them. So this is isopropanol, 99% rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to use that as my fuel today. So this will take about 10 minutes to come to a boil. I should put the windscreen on it, I suppose. Windscreen just, you know, helps stop any breezes. Keeps the flame directed at the pot. So as you can see, I'm at a full boil. There's still plenty of fuel left, I'm sure. This is a really efficient stove, even compared to most store-bought stoves. This stove performs really well. In fact, I'm going to make enough water for a second one, and then I'll process some water while I'm taking my break. So you can see, even off the little amount of fuel that I put in, I probably put in about two fluid ounces maybe. I'm at a full boil again, the equivalent to two cups. I'll just let it burn through the fuel though and stay at a boil. I'm not done my first coffee.
the tripod the camera's on for the grill. So I'm just making a flimsy little camera tripod. need to hold any weight at all. It just needs to hold the camera. Alright, camera migration accomplished. I'm now on to a new tripod. And that tripod was, as you can see, just thicker wood and more durable. So it'll carry weight when I put it over the fire when I cook food on it. So I put a bed of sticks that are, say, you know, the size of your pinky to about the size of your thumb, maybe a bit bigger. And you kind of set them down as a bed. The land I'm in is really moist. These dry sticks help kind of keep the fire uh, a little bit away from the moisture and just helps the fire build and grow. Plus, because there's spaces in it, the air can get in underneath as you're starting the fire. Just makes it a little easier to get your fire going. snaps easy it's good wood. If it doesn't it's got a lot of moisture in it still. Potentially it has half decent amount of life still left in it even though it's full you know looks dead. You want the ones that snap real easy. You know obviously unless the sticks become bigger and thicker then it's harder to just snap them but you'll know what I mean when you're doing it. They're brittle. So I'll just gather up the small things and work my way up. So I want to separate out the really small ones from the bigger pieces. Anything below about a pencil size or so is going to go in the smallest pile. Anything bigger than that, you're going to separate off into a, a larger small pile. <laughs> you know, once you get up to about the size of your index finger, say your thumb, you know, that size, you kind of set that aside. Gotta gather up some more thumb sized ones. So, the smaller branches we cleaned off of that tree over there, I just went back and grabbed the branches that were picked to the small stuff and took them too. That'll be my larger sticks, if you will. Right? And while you're doing that, if you're harvesting that tree, you're really clearing it and getting ready to saw and all that kind of stuff. So the order in which you're 
the order in which you're doing things, you can really save yourself a lot of work and wasted energy just by doing it in a good order. You know? And you can see there's a few stragglers still left that are small. They can go in the small pile. Well. I'll be more generous. See, that one had a bit of bow and bend to it. I don't know if it'll burn that well. Further up the branch, it seems far more dead, but still had a bit of spring to it in the uh, base of it. So this is kind of a skeleton camp. Like I say, I still got to work on my fire a bit more. But uh, the, when I'm doing that stuff, I kind of pace myself as I go. I don't want to break a sweat. I don't want to get my clothes all sweaty and stuff. you got to uh, mind your uh, core body temperature at all times. Even if it's, you know, summertime, the temperatures where I'm at can get cool when you're in the forest and drop down into single digits easily as soon as the uh, pit of cloud or something comes. But uh, down that way is where the latrine is that uh, we put together earlier. And as you can see, fairly low-key, skinny camp, really. I'll get the fire going, I'll hang my grill on there, I'll get some steaks going, or I think I got ribs this time. I'll get some ribs going, some rice and stuff, it'll all work out. Need another banger stick. <laughs> Rainforest wood, always a joy. Unless it's thicker, it's like that. All right, well, we'll try these two. Hopefully I'll be able to bang one out that I can just use out of the thicker stuff. Yeah. Gotta get it down to a size I can manage. There is a lot of dead trees in the area, so it makes it good for gathering resources like this. I just try not to do it too much. I like to leave everything the way I found it as much as possible. Okay, so really, I gotta get my bird's nest ready pretty quick here. I'm just gonna stop and take a break, but it's uh, just, it was a little moist in the wood. I found this on the trail, actually. It was right near a cedar, so must have just kind of given it off or storms or whatever, but it was a little damp when I found it. But uh, some of the work's already done for me, so that helps. But I've been trying to let it just hang and dry here as much as possible to get any moisture out of it through the breeze. But uh, I'll cut back pretty quick here and get this bird's nest going one way or the other. Alright, well there you have it. There's the bile for tonight. 
If I have to burn that big one at the end, I will, but I always like to have a chop and lock, and it's a lot of work cutting through those things, so it's, it is what it is, though. If I need to burn it, I will. Either way, this should give me a few hours, I think. Kind of rub off all the larger fibers and get down. It's almost like hair consistency on the inside. Once you kind of break down all those fibers, it becomes more and more just fluffy, and that's what you want. You really want to get that as fluffy as you possibly can. You can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but a pile of dust that just comes off every time I shake it and move it. Normally, I'd catch those but I really wanted to kind of emphasize emphasize them by seeing them in the light, if you will. I'll still be able to get this going regardless. But So I'm just going to keep breaking it down. I want to turn it into a, a bird's nest that's really fluffy and light, and I want it to be about the size of like a large baseball, you know, maybe even a bit bigger. You want a fair size, it's that. So this gives you a bit of an idea. I still got to break it down even more than I have and make it real fine on the inside. But it's a good, you know, two hands in size. It's a fair size when it comes to, you know, the volume of it. And really, into the center of it, I want to try to get that stuff to be as fine as I possibly can. If I can powder that down to be like a baby hair, if you will, that would be an ideal thing. When you throw the spark in there, you want it to be uh, really aerated and uh, dried out and you know, ready to ignite, if you will, as much as possible. The finer, the better for that result. So I think I'm going to switch it up and put the grill on first. Still got a bit of water from where I boiled off earlier today. And, uh, really I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten much today. It's been a busy day doing this stuff. Yeah, you can see the little S hooks allow it that you can just swap out the different heads, if you will. So I can hang a pot or hang the grill and that kind of thing easy enough. 
makes being able to uh, process food and water a lot easier when you have this equipment. And it's relatively inexpensive to make or to have. I'll get the fire going pretty quick here. Okay, yeah, so just grab my char tin. Char is uh, cooked cotton or wood or other materials that have been pre-cooked in this can on the fire. I keep a little piece of copper on the top because there's an air hole in that can. It just stops the air from getting at the char too much. So I'm going to take a piece of char. I'll use a good healthy one. I got lots of it. So like I say, to make this stuff uh, in a primitive fashion, you can throw uh, twigs and that type of thing into the can. Close the lid. I don't know if you have a camera can see that. There's a little hole there, and uh, uh, that's the cotton is just to stop the air from getting in. But when you're cooking it, uh, it lets out all the gases. After about half an hour, it'll stop stop gassing and become charred material. When you use a ferro rod to throw a spark into it, it's far easier to ignite. I've got a little ferro rod on my bellow, and uh, it's got a striker plate on it and the ferro rod. So I ignited the uh, char material now. The char really takes easy. Every spark that hit it, it's now going. So I'll put that right into the heart of the bird's nest. Now I want to blow into it to add oxygen and build the heat. Cedar's really, really wet. Like I said, I didn't pull it live off of a tree. I just grabbed it off the path, so I knew it had more moisture into it. Just gonna let it breathe and build. Now my smaller twigs, I want them to dry out and take that flame as quickly as they possibly can. Even these twigs aren't that dry.
not one to go easy today. Now I'll just give that a second to dry out those little pieces of wood and just strengthen itself. When you're dealing with a lot of moisture and things, even wet wood will burn, but it needs to have the heat to dry itself out a bit. If it doesn't have that, So I'm only adding small amounts of time now because I'm just letting them dry out as the fire builds. I don't really even want to move up to the bigger ones yet. I just want the heat to accumulate. If you pinch your fingers, you can make a little diamond shape. And if you don't have one of those bellows, you can direct your breath when you blow at the fire far better. I'm just spoiled, I've got toys. <laughs> Once all this wood looks like it'll start to take, I'll start to move up to the bigger wood then. Like I say, this will just start to grow now. So you can see I've tossed on a few of the bigger pieces, still the smaller ones out of those. But the moisture is in this small wood pretty good. key really is you want to move up to these bigger pieces of wood and make sure that they're burning stably. It can make you feel a little more assured that this fire is going to hold. If those larger pieces don't take you might end up going all the way back to square one again. Well like I say ribs and rice day today. Probably going to cook off the ribs first. I'll eat the rice. I got a fair bit of ribs there, so I'll eat the rice if I'm still hungry, but if I'm not, I'll just leave it. We'll see. Still got two left in the pack. Oh well. I might cook it with the rice either way. Lower this into the pit.
You can sit and watch this all day. So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So thanks for tuning in to another one of my bushcraft adventures. As you can see this time I did a raised paracord bed using mule tape as the structural support. It's a really lightweight option when it comes to stuff. It's not necessarily the most comfortable in the world, but if you want to go minimalist style, most people have rope. I tend to carry a lot of it. But uh, I'm going to uh, cut here and have my dinner and that type of thing. Sounds like that's starting to sizzle pretty good, so I'm going to cut here and uh, have my dinner and that kind of thing. I'll cut back with a few more scenes, but uh, if you enjoy this type of content, like, share, subscribe, that kind of thing, you know, Pavlov's bell and all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. So I don't know if I'm even going to bother cooking up that rice. I ate those ribs and threw the two on and I feel pretty stuffed to begin with. I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get through those two ribs. So I think I'm going to hold off on the rice. I'll cut back with some closing scenes of the fire and that type of thing.